Hey guys, and welcome to Bite Sized. In this video series, we take on web development one byte at a time. Now in today's video, we're going to be talking how you can log out performance from Next.js using their built-in analytics, as well as how you pass that along to something like Google Analytics so a client can see what's happening on the pages. So let's get into some code. We're inside of Visual Studio Code with a very simple Next.js application that has an API that shows you a list of people. And then when you click on that person, it gives you details about them. And it doesn't really matter what kind of application this is, but this is a good example because it uses API calls, although it's technically just fake data. And it also has a few routes. So I'm inside the app.js file, and this is where you can start logging out your web vitals. Now, there are a few web vitals that are built in, which are just the standard set. So we have time to first byte, which is TTFB, first contentful paint, FCP, largest contentful paint, LCP, first input delay, FID, and then finally cumulative layout shift. So you can log all of these out without having to do much more than state what you'd like. And then there's some custom built-in ones for Next.js, such as Next.js hydration, Next.js route change to render, and then Next.js render. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how you can export these out and you can create your own custom analytics and you can do whatever you want with them. And then after that, I'm going to show you how you can take it from just doing what we did and just log everything into Google Analytics. So let's get started here. And the first thing you need to do is create a new function. And now this function is going to be called report web vitals. And you're going to pass in metric. Now this is the exact name it has to be and it's built in as part of Next.js. And everything here can be handled under the same thing. So now we have that, we can create what, what, what I like to use, which is a switch case that goes down and decides what it wants to do with each metric name. So you can do switch metric.name, and then inside of here you can write your cases. And the way the case works, if you've never used metrics before, it's basically the shorthand. So FCP, LCP, CLS, FID, and TTFB. So I'm going to write out a bunch of cases here, time lapse it, and then you can take a look and see where we're at. We have created this switch and we're looking for each case of the metric name. And based upon that, we're going to log it out as a metric and we can see what's inside of them. So let's head onto our website and start looking at what's being logged out. As you can see, immediately we have a TTFB and an LCP and FID with the start times, the values, and obviously the label. And as we click, you'll see that nothing really else comes on the screen. And that's because these are actual content that would be coming from Next.js. So let's go back into the code and add a few custom ones to see what happens when we move around pages such as when we click on this one, we should see more than just LCP, TTFB, and FID, which by themselves are useful, but we want to know what Next.js is up to. So underneath our TTFB in our cases, we can just write a new one that says next.js-hydration. And that will be our case for hydration. And this is any time that anything on the page is hydrated, we'll be able to see that. Then we can just do a console.log and we'll do another json.stringify and we'll dump out that metric. And then we can just go ahead and copy this. And there's only three really big ones here. We've got next.js and then this one is route-change to render. And of course, we need Next.js-render. And that's it. 
So let's go back to our site one more time, take a look at this and see what happens. And as you can already see, we have one for Next.js Hydration. We also have the TTFB, LCP and the FID. Now, when I click on one of these, we're going to see a new set of analytics show up. So let's click on Luke Skywalker. So now you can see the Next.js render also ran and then also the Next.js route change to render. So now we're getting all of these different values being passed along, which have useful information such as how long it's taken for us to render this page. So this is great. You can log this out to your own custom analytics and use this to determine how well your Next.js app is performing. But in the real world, people are using Google Analytics. So let's go back to my code, which already includes the G tag and everything you need for Google Analytics. And let's see how we can export these out into Google Analytics and show it in the console. So we're back at our export function report web vitals, and we're actually gonna make huge changes to this. So let's go ahead and delete this out. We don't need any of this anymore because the way we're gonna do it is we're going to do it very Google-fied. So, Inside of here, we're going to create a new set of props. We're gonna have an ID, name, label, and value. And we're going to take those and we're going to pass them in. So what's good about the way that I have this set up right now is that we actually have the G tag available. So you can just do window.g tag and then open up a set of parentheses and say event and then comma name which we're taking from our props up here. And then we can actually do some work here. So we're going to do event category, and that's to put it in the right event category. And then we're going to say label, and then equals web dash vital. And if it is a web vital, we're going to put this as web vitals, else, we know it's next.js, so we can just write next.js custom metric. And that will handle the label and, and place it in Google Analytics the way we want. Then for values, they have to be an integer. So we're going to do math.round. And then inside of here, we can just do name equals and then CLS. And then value times 1000, or we'll just return the value and that handles it for that because this CLS one does not get returned as an integer and if you've forgotten what CLS is CLS is the cumulative layout shift and that is not returned as an integer so now we have that all we have to do is do the event label and the event label will be our ID and then finally non underscore interaction and we're going to set that to true and you might wonder what this is and this stops the uh, bounce rate so it won't affect your bounce rate when you're using this so it's important that you include that and then if you hit save everything is good to go so first let's make sure that our code works and then we can drop into Google Analytics and see how it's presented. Our website still works and everything is still being displayed, but now we're not logging any of this out. So let's go ahead, jump into Google Analytics and take a look and see what it looks like. So here we are in Google Analytics. And as you can see, we have an active user right now, which is obviously me. And what you can do now is see these in real time. So if you go to real time and events, and go to the events in the last 30 minutes, you'll be able to see all the events that have happened. And those include the Next.js hydration, CLS, FCP, LCP, TTFB, render, route change, FID, and how many times these events have fired. And then you can do some great analytics with that and you can dig down into what's happening and the scores and events and how long it takes, etc. So there we have it guys, using performance analytics in your Google Analytics, as well as being able to use those in your own custom analytics. It's super powerful and should be used on your Next.js apps when you need to know really how well it's performing outside of that Lighthouse score that everybody's chatting about. 
Now, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to drop it a like, leave a comment and tell me what else you'd like to see in Bite Sized. Until next time, see ya!